Now look, guys, I think there's been some confusion about whether my brother is copying me or I'm copying him or this or that. Listen, this is my real voice. My name is Barrett. Um... No, you're... Shh. No, it's not. No, just don't listen to Jack. No. no. Always listen to Jack. Google just won't stop with the IO 2016 news. They've just given updates on Project Aura, Solly, and Jacquard. Aura, the modular smartphone, has a new prototype that integrates basic functionality into the frame, which enables you to pretty much hot swap the modules without rebooting. A Google rep demoed the system by plugging in a camera module, taking a picture of the audience, then ejecting it by saying to the phone, OK, Google, eject the camera. The developer version of the phone will ship later this year with a few modules, and the consumer version is expected sometime in 2017. Project Solly, the radar sensor Google's using to track hand movements, now comes in the form of a small chip that can be built into smartwatches so you can interact with them without using physical touch. The chip is also being built into some prototype JBL speakers so you can control them with gestures from 15 meters away. And Project Jacquard got a new Levi's jacket that integrates touch sensors into the sleeve so you can change your music, answer calls, and interact in other ways just by swiping the fabric. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Other companies, you can just chill now. Google's taking us into the future all by themselves. AMD has made an official announcement for an event they'll be holding on June 1st in Taipei, which is actually 7 p.m. on May 31st Pacific time. The company will provide information on the upcoming Polaris GPUs and officially launch their 7th gen Bristol Ridge APUs. But if AMD's previous launch events are any indication, we'll see the Polaris products actually revealed and then officially launched later, possibly at E3. But that launch will only be a paper launch. The actual launch could be as late as October. 2017. I joke. Also, the October thing I made up. And Oculus just can't help but keep making itself the bad guy these days. The company has just released an update that disables a user-made program that allowed games bought on the Oculus Store to be played on other headsets like the HTC Vive. The software, called Revive, was published by a dev calling himself Libra VR last month. But the new Oculus Store update now makes games check whether a Rift headset is connected to the PC before they begin breaking the workaround. Of course, this is within Oculus's right as a company to do, but it's very disappointing given the company's early attitude of openness, and especially considering that the HTC Vive and Steam are so open themselves. What do you guys think? Is Oculus heading down a path towards disaster? Leave a comment. What time is it? It's time for... Quick Bits. Well, consider me very flattered. I was jealous when Julia got her own remix. Now, the universe is in harmony again. If you want to see yourself featured on Netlink, send us a clip of yourself saying quick bits. IMAX thinks people will pay 10 bucks to go to a theater and try a VR experience for 10 minutes, so they're launching said experiences at a number of theaters across the US. Um, yeah, I'll just take a full-length movie for a few more bucks, thanks. Lazy math students rejoice! MathPix is a phone app that deciphers equations from a photo. Yeah, well, back in my day, we did calculus in our heads! Pfft, I hate new things! The Drone Buster is an anti-drone gun made by FlexForce that essentially fires hacks. It can jam a drone's control signal, but can also hijack that signal to force a drone to fly home or land. Man, these would be perfect to promote watchdogs, too. You're welcome, Ubisoft. Google is disabling the backspace shortcut for going back in Chrome because some people were pressing it by accident. Yeah, well, some of us know how to type and like using it, so you didn't think about that, did you, Google? And a report says Apple is working on letting Mac owners unlock their computers by using the fingerprint sensor on their iPhone. Nice. News sources for all of today's stories can be found in the forum post linked in the description. The Fitnessgram Pacer Test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. One of the cool things about building your own PC is that you can upgrade different components from time to time, and sometimes those upgrades come with their own perks, like free games. For example, right now at NCIX, if you buy select AMD R9 390 series graphics cards or FX8 core processors, you get a game code for Total War Warhammer completely free. It's got griffins in it, so you know it's cool. 
click here or the link in the description for all the details. All right, that's it for Nightling Daily, guys. Thanks for watching. Click here to watch more videos. Follow us on Twitter over here. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go convince Barrett that I'm him. It won't be easy, but...